Welcome to our second video lecture of Model 4, where we continue examining federal case studies in light of an interdisciplinary perspective, highlighting the legal, the political, and the social foundations of federalism and decentralization. Our second case is Ethiopia, but just as I had remarked in our previous case study of South Africa, the video lecture could only be a general overview of Ethiopian federalism. Further specialization necessitates further reading. And you'll see that we have three articles on Ethiopia from the journal Regional and Federal Studies, as well as a manuscript by yours truly available for this purpose. Now, let's turn our attention to Ethiopia in order to provide an overview of the recent history, followed by a quick tour of the legal, political and social foundations of Ethiopian federalism. South Africa's transition to democracy in the early 1990s and its post-apartheid constitution tends to be better known. But during the same time period, the shifting global power politics was bringing large-scale change to Ethiopia as well. In a rapidly changing world order, the military regime in Ethiopia that had been in power since the 1970s could no longer rely on Soviet military, political and economic support. Subsequently, the military regime went on the defensive as it came under attack from various opposition militias organized along ethnic lines. These were uncertain times and it was not clear what the new face of Ethiopia would look like. Federalism was not a predetermined blueprint with which around ethnic groups and opposition had joined. It simply emerged as a, um, as a uh, workable compromise. The loose alliance of 27 opposition militias first set up the transitional government of Ethiopia. Federalism came to be seen as the only way to recognize and empower various ethnic groups, and then adopting a federal constitution for the nations, nationalities and peoples of Ethiopia. The very ambiguity of these categories was not an accident, but it reflected a desire to bring in all in terms of the self-designation for the ethnic groups, whether they saw themselves as nations, or as nationalities, or as peoples. Ethiopia's post-conflict 1995 constitution is based explicitly on the principle of ethnic federalism, recognizing all the nations, nationalities and peoples inhabiting the country. 65 different ethnic groups are officially recognized and each ethnic group is granted the right to form its own regional state, of course, subject to some political and procedural qualification. The regional states of Ethiopian Federation also enjoy the right of secession. This is the only country where the explicit right to secede is constitutionally recognized and the procedural path to do so is outlined. Ethiopia's new 1995 constitution is remarkable in its unambiguous endorsement of ethnic federalism as the foundational principle of New Ethiopia. To be precise, it's not ethnicity per se that defines New Ethiopia, but ethnicity in its territorial guise, that is, a federal system built on ethnically determined regional states forms the foundations of the new system. The Ethiopian Post-conflict settlement is founded on the principle of ethnic federalism, where ethnicity and territory correspond. But 20 years on, the principle and the practice do not always align uh, perfectly. The day-to-day -day workings of ethnic federalism in Ethiopia is more ambiguous than stated in the 1995 constitution. Some smaller ethnic groups have formally acquired their own regional states, but without the requisite economic and political power to run their own affairs, while the territorial claims of bigger ethnic groups have been uh, stonewalled. Ethnic politics often takes place not within the formal institutions of the federal system, but within the country's dominant political party, the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front, EPRDF, and its allies dominate electoral politics. And in naturally, both houses of the parliament, as well as uh, the regional states, this is the case. Now, an interesting legal foundation of Ethiopian federalism is vesting the role of the Supreme Constitutional Court with the indirectly elected upper house of the parliament, the Ethiopian House of the Federation, 
where representatives of each one of the constituent nations, nationalities and peoples sit. And this seems to underscore the point that Ethiopian federalism is more of a political compromise among ethnic communities rather than a technical legal one that could be resolved by courts. There are formal elements of federalism enshrined in the 1991 constitution on the one hand and political patterns that define the workings of federalism on the other. How the two interact with the uncodified social foundations determines the workings of Ethiopian federalism. There are in fact more ethnic groups in Ethiopia than the officially recognized 65. Some smaller groups are currently seeking recognition. Some are recognized in regional state constitutions only, while a number of Aboriginal communities who are much behind in their levels of economic development inhabit the depths of the southern rainforest, beyond the reach and range of the Ethiopian state infrastructure and modernization. Many ethnic groups of the country are further divided historically into Orthodox Christian and Muslim halves. Shared ethno-cultural practices predating both religions and strong ties to common locality and language have historically tended to bind ethnic groups otherwise divided by religion together. Recently, the two religious communities have been joined by a small but rapidly growing evangelical Protestant minority. Ethiopia's 90 million citizens live in 11 regional states, quite different from one another in geography, in size, population, economic development and ethnic composition. Some of the Ethiopian regional states are small city-states with urban multi-ethnic populations. Some are large but underdeveloped peripheral regional states. Some are ethnically homogenous. Others are amalgamations of dozens of different ethnic groups, some of which are indigenous to the territory, while others have settled there in recent generations. The regional states of central and northern Ethiopia form the historic basis of Highlander, Semitic-speaking ethnic groups who had been politically, economically, culturally and linguistically dominant in imperial times. Southern regional states, on the other hand, had been incorporated in Ethiopia only in, uh, in the recent uh, episode of imperial history. Ethnic groups from the south had been politically, economically, culturally and linguistically marginalized until the arrival of ethnic federalism in 1995. Most of these ethnic groups with relatively recent histories of incorporation into Ethiopia are relatively small and they tend to inhabit the ethnically and linguistically diverse southern regional states. An important benchmark to help navigate the maze of territorial politics and ethnicity in Ethiopia is the difference between titular and settler ethnic groups. The language and culture of ethnic groups who are historically indigenous to the territory are recognized under the system of ethnic federalism. Put simply, they hold title to the territory. Tensions have grown as regional states amend their constitutions or adopt new constitutions affirming this right. So ethnic relations have become particularly polarized in some regional states whose constitutions make sons of the soil or homeland references, thereby politically and culturally disenfranchising settler communities who have been living in the same ter territory for generations. And in addition to titular and settler groups, some of the southern regions also include small and isolated Aboriginal communities living in the deep rainforest. In comparison to both titular and settler ethnic groups, Aboriginal groups are most often completely powerless to defend their rights in the game of ethnic politics. The challenges to translating the principles of ethnic federalism into practice do not only come from inter-ethnic politics. There are also geographic and demographic factors preventing the full-scale realization of the principles enshrined in the 1995 constitution. Some ethnic groups simply lack the territorial concentration that is necessary for the creation of new regional states. In some cases, the demographic mosaic is so complex 
that numerous ethnic groups inhabit the same geography without clear territorial concentration that ethnic federalism needs. There are also economic, infrastructural and personnel limitations in translating the principles of ethnic federalism into practice. Some of the smaller and peripheral regional states simply lack the administrative capacity to manage their newly found competences. The Afar regional states, for example, until recently lacked trained personnel proficient in the Afari language itself. The country's territorial diversity has an economic side to it as well. Urban and industrialized regions coexist with a poorer periphery and the subsequent economic disparities between the regions create more challenges for the federal system. Poorer regional states cannot fulfill their constitutional responsibilities. Regional cooperation becomes asymmetrical, empowering richer regional states. And the central government becomes more powerful than what the constitution suggests as it jumps into spearhead large-scale developmental infrastructure projects and to supervise foreign direct investment. The aim of this video lecture was to set the Ethiopian case within the broader perspective of federalism and decentralization. What came out was the complexity influencing the workings of federalism, especially when the formal meets the uncodified. With 65 ethnic groups and 11 regional states, the complexities of managing ethnic diversity render the country's track record with ethnic federalism a microcosm of comparative lessons, both in substantive but also in theoretical terms. Now, if you thought Ethiopia was a bewildering mix of peoples, I wonder what you will think of a country with around 200 linguistic communities spread over 36 regional states. Our next case is Nigeria. Don't miss it, and I'll see you there.